um, to the many people who arrived here in the recent months or recent month, basically, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for even bothering to stay, click that subscribe button and tune in to any and all things I just so happen to do. And I love the feedback everyone gives and it's interesting hearing takes from so many different people so many different opinions and have almost a cultural hub in a way to share viewpoints, be able to relate to one another. A lot of you may not be aware who have just recently made your way here, but exactly one year ago, not exactly the day, but tomorrow, I lost my mother. And if you go back and see a few of my videos from now going to that day in particular, or slightly before. She used to comment a lot on my videos. She was supportive in every single way. And the very first video I uploaded was a performance of Henry V, a monologue that I did for performing arts it was Shakespeare night is what they called it I had a sword and you can hear her in the video so happy and so proud and um she was actually upset that I didn't show her any of my abilities or clue her into any of this afterwards she was like why didn't you tell me you could do this and that I was any money that I have, I'll go and apply it to what you want to do. Like, you should be doing this. And I, it's just not really worth doing without her here. Many people across the world, they have great, amazing mothers who they'll go and put on a pedestal and say how thankful they are to have them in their lives. But when I tell you how unique, gentle, and kind of a spirit that she was. If anything, I'm watering it down because I won't be able to properly put it in the words. I'll put a link to her channel. She had a YouTube channel as well. I'll put it in the description so maybe you can at least get a somewhat of an essence of what I'm referring to. Just being able to be raised by someone like that and develop a lot of their morals and their ideals and apply them to your life going forward. I still blame myself. I won't ever stop blaming myself. I will regret it until the day I leave this earth. She passed away to a blood clot. We didn't know that she had it. I'm not sure at what point in time it developed, but I do know that a month prior she fell down the steps, which then caused it. I just don't know when it developed. And no one had really any inkling about it. There were just maybe two to three complaints about something. And she was just shortness of breath. But I just attributed it to paranoia over the virus. A lot of different things. And it was a night before where she had an attack of some kind. I didn't really realize what was going on. I was just saying, make a appointment with your primary care, talk to a doctor, do something like that, reach out. But then it's kind of hard to do that when Michigan was shut down and a lot of hospitals and stuff were just either not taking certain appointments. You couldn't see anyone. It was just madness and it was horrible. And ironically, Michigan is on the verge of being shut down again. And it's the epicenter of the virus currently. So I just, I looked over as she sleep. I checked in on her numerous times. There was no problem. I woke up because I didn't sleep much because I sleep horribly. I gave her a blanket as she was eating something. And she said, thank you. And gave her a hug. Next thing you know, it was a loud boom. I was hard sleep. I didn't hear her grandmother heard. She called me on the phone I went in the bathroom and then I just saw her laying there struggling and as I look on it now there may there was in fact enough time for me to have called 911 but 
the way this virus played with people's head and how it was mismanaged by both parties in the so-called greatest country on earth people don't want to go to hospital for things they don't want to get they don't want to get it because if you go to hospital you may get it so i'm like i'm gonna call 911 grandmother and her said no they were just saying she's like i just need to breathe and all it took was just me picking up the phone and calling and I didn't do that. I don't know how many minutes went by, but I know that it was enough time for me to see my own mother struggle, cry, be in pain and pass away in my arms, which I then decided to call 911, which should have been done earlier. My younger brother was also present for it. He was nine at the time. He's 10 now. And I called them. They got here too late. I couldn't stay up here with her. Something else I forget. My father, who's not in my life, I called him and told him about what happened. He stopped work. He came over here. First time that he's laid eyes on her in years. He spent more time up here with her lifeless on the bathroom floor than I did. And I just couldn't bear it. I just, I live in some type of delusional world at times, a world just full of fantasy. And... She stayed up here on the bathroom floor for hours. More than enough time for me to be up here with her, and I wasn't up here with her. And then the coroner came, people handled things of that nature, and then I had to see them take my mother, put her in a body bag, and the last thing that I ever did was just rub her head, and that was it. Then they took her out. I didn't get to have a funeral for her. I didn't get to see her again. That was just it. Because of the way this virus said, you can't have funerals, you can't have people around. And that's part of the reason why I'm so numb to so many things. And a lot of things just don't bother me or they don't get to me in the same way. And when you see something like that, there's just so much that you can put into perspective. It's, it just doesn't matter. I could care less what people think of what people say. If people don't agree with me or think, label me this or that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to lie and say my faith hasn't been shaken. My faith in a great many things has been shaken. And I feel the deepest sense of regret for my younger brother who doesn't get to experience the joy and the magic that I experienced when I was his age, being able to have the privilege of growing up with a mom who put her 100% into each and every single thing I did, supported me in whatever I wanted to do, spoiled me. He didn't get to experience enough of that. And he has autism. He would need her. He's not on the highest end of autism, but he still has it. He has a father that doesn't really care about him. I've had to go through a custody case in which we lost custody to him. And we no longer have custody. I was thinking that, well, surely a man that hasn't spent, uh, he, I mean, he hasn't been in his life, period. He doesn't play child support. He's never been married to my mother. I would have thought maybe the courts would side with us and maybe he should stay here with people no but they didn't and that was something else that broke me and messed me up we had a lawsuit that was going and the what trans like what happened with her passing that didn't work out either the funeral home lost her body for a good period of time which they didn't know where she was at and i had to pay over 3 to 4000 dollars in order for funeral arrangements, which they then embalmed her body against our wishes because we cremated her. Then they embalmed it because they get more money from embalming a body than just straight up cremation. So they embalmed it without anyone giving them the say so. So that's three different pains. Losing my brother is another. The lawsuit that we had, it didn't go through and on the grounds of well, she was somewhat overweight, so we can't sue based on people who are overweight tend to have shorter life expectancy anyway. So they treat obesity as a pre-existing condition. 
So if you happen to be overweight and you die from something that's an outside force, that's not our fault or we're not liable. That's your fault. So I had all of this go on. The only reason I'm even able to stay in this house is because of my mother's insurance policies that she had had for us. And it's just realizing that so much of my life is just held together by a thread and it's put on sand, a very weak foundation. And it's now up to me entirely. I'm basically by myself. I only have my grandmother, my little brother. My grandmother is 74. She's not going to be here for much longer. I have a father who could care less. There's no immediate family members to think of. It's just you're on your own from now on. And you're unequipped to deal with a lot of these things. So what do you do? You do the one thing that you've thought or you have been told by so many people, you should do this, you should pursue this. I never had the um, displeasure of having people saying, you can't do this, you won't amount to anything. I had so many people say, you'll amount to this, you have talent in that, do this, go pursue that. And then to not do anything because of depression, crippling depression, that has gotten way, way worse, but doing YouTube and things concerning entertaining it just helps to say that i care about being here and it it's really hurts to breathe each and every day it's just a constant nightmare i get brief respites of solitude or peace from making these videos and some interactions with my younger brother and grandmother but it's in no way shape or form the same this was her room or her makeup room, it's her makeup table. You're reminded by your loved one each and every single place you look. I can only think of how many families have lost somebody because of, not even because of COVID itself, but because COVID exists and they can't go to the hospital for what they normally would have. And if this virus hadn't existed, or it was properly taken care of the way it should have been, she would still be here. I failed her, and the world failed her, or the people who are supposed to be responsible, were supposed to care about our well-being, failed her. The government failed her. Can't go to the hospital because the hospitals are just too oversaturated with patients because of a virus that was called a hoax for months by so-and-so. I don't really talk about policy and politics, but only things when it affects me personally. And that's why I have the disposition of I don't care about either party. I don't define myself as either belonging to either party. They both failed me. A lot of things that have happened have failed me. And I failed myself and I failed her. And the only way to make something out of it is to continue to go forward with the dream that she had for me which was doing what I want to do and pursuing entertainment and just being an entertainer which to me it just it doesn't hold the same amount of weight it just doesn't matter you just don't you don't have a mother here to share it with you don't have a mother to spoil like she did for me she got us up out of Detroit by herself on one income, no one else helping her. All of these things, and I didn't get to pay her back any of it. And the way things were left, if I had could at least have 10 minutes, maybe even two to three minutes with her, I'd give everything that I own away in order to have that, but I can't get that anymore. So that's why I look at a lot of things now as... You know, it just doesn't matter in the grand sense of things. I'm not scared of being resented or having people scold me or look at me in a different way because I have an opinion that's different from theirs. So there's really nothing in this world that scares me and there's not really much here that keeps me going. I'm just moved forward just to what else am I supposed to do, essentially? Um... I, again, appreciate so many of you for bothering to stick around, especially those who care to watch a lot of this video. Um, I don't want in any way, shape, or form anyone to feel as if they're somehow 
uh, pitied by me to where I'm just going to subscribe just because whatever, I feel sorry for the guy and stuff. But if, if you ever feel I don't provide you with quality content or you don't desire to see any of my videos more than welcome that I will completely understand if you would leave um I don't really know where to go from here to be honest with you uh I really don't know I try my best every day it's just Every time I close my eyes, I see that I relive that same. I think about it almost every single second of every day. If I had just called 911, so maybe that would have made a difference. Something. It just hurts. It really it. I'll just, I'll put a link of her channel in the description if you care to see. But um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you.